Good afternoon, everyone. Sustainability. Some things are the same, some have changed. So we're the last panel of the last day, which anybody who organizes events knows that's how it usually was, the sustainability session. The difference now is it's a key priority, as heard this morning. It was heard yesterday. And I believe the entire exhibit floor is fairly dedicated to sustainability. So it's clearly an important topic. But we wanted to really start out with this perspective of, of you have ESG, you have sustainability, and then you have mice. The blending of the two is now becoming more apparent for the, all the physical, the, ten, the tangible pieces that mice can provide. So we've got a great panel here today. And what we wanted to do is to start off, we'll talk a little bit about, of course, challenges, this role within the very specific roles of the gentleman next to me, and as well, how we can um, really get into some of the, the key topics of net zero, greenwashing, and all these pieces as we move sustainability forward in the industry. So uh, we'll, just, we'll start off uh, first, um, go from my left here. Uh, so Kenneth, a uh, little bit about your role and what you do and how you see the role of um, mice in ESG. Okay, uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. My name is Kenneth. Uh, I'm heading sustainability globally at Razor. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity to be here with everyone face to face, getting the, the interaction. And this is what I miss the most. And I think this is a really great reset for uh, the great the, the industry. And, and um, I think really very happy to, to be here. So uh, Razor, as you probably know, is the world's largest uh, lifestyle brands for gamers, which we cover hardware, software, and services. Uh, MICE as an industry is actually very important to us because uh, we are for gamers by gamers and we always want to have that kind of personal touch, face-to-face -face interaction with our gamers. So we do uh, uh, events across the globe. So we do uh, fan meetups, uh, we do engagement, uh, we rally them on campaigns and causes. And I think uh, increasingly, I think the, the consumers are very enlightened. They want more, and uh, they want us to be accountable and responsible for them. And I think uh, a lot of people might think that the mice industry is uh, a lot to use and throw away kind of uh, economy. But to me, I think mice industry actually has tremendous uh, potential to actually decarbonize because uh, the, the same people setting up the, the, the premises will also be looking at the removal of all the structures. So it's totally possible to achieve circularity in that sense, and uh, zero waste and waste minimization, which is the key agenda, uh, as we can see in, in, in the mainstream medias, what the consumers are talking. So I think uh, I remain very positive that uh, we are here today on the right direction to put the industry one step towards uh, circularity and a net zero, net zero future. Very good. Well, mice and events in general, we know there's a, an infinite amount of possibilities and challenges. Um, so you probably deal with a lot of them. <laughs> uh, could you tell us about how you, your view, what, what your organization does on sustainability, and how you view that how mice can play a role in ESG? Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say I look at it from this perspective being the in-between person. Like, we are a professional congress organizer, so that means we organize events, but we work with associations that are actually our clients. And I feel sustainability is one of those areas that is not as client-driven as many other things that we do. Um, I just looked it up again about a year ago in the AMI magazine. There was a survey asking associations how big they think their impact is on the meetings industry. And about 65% thought they have no or very limited impact on sustainability. So the meetings industry has a very limited impact on sustainability which is a bit scary. And um, when we talk about our industry, we usually do things when the clients ask us to. But I think this is one of those areas where we actually have to drive our clients to make sure they know what impact we have and how much we can do. We look at it from two perspectives. Uh, number one is, where can we minimize our negative impact uh, on, the, on, sustain, on, on the environment? but also where can we have a positive impact? Uh, because it's not just about minimizing your, your damage that you do, but also is there something we can contribute that's positive? And that's where, for me, the UN SDGs come in, because I feel the meetings industry is such a great multiplier on so many things that have an impact on sustainability, be it uh, quality education around the globe, be it, um, eliminating 
uh, inequalities, be it um, giving everybody a stage, all of those things we can have a great impact on. So to answer your question in a very long-winded way, we look at it in a very holistic way. How can we work with clients to make sure we have a positive impact, but also uh, minimizing the negative impacts we have, especially when it comes to carbon emissions and other environmental impacts? Good. Well, that's, we, we know that has to be holistic on the various topics, um, but then you have to kind of hone into each one. So that's why, Derek, I think the work that you're doing at Alibaba, because Alibaba is obviously a, a massive one for a lot of work that is done across the spectrum, but in your, your work in cloud services, um, could you tell us about the work that you're doing and how you view this, how mice can play a role in ESG uh, when you now go a little bit more specific into your area? Okay. Um, okay, good afternoon. This is Derek Wang, uh, the general manager of Alibaba Cloud Singapore. Uh, so sustainability usually has uh, several uh, challenges. Uh, usually has three aspects, uh, environment, uh, social, and, uh, and economic. Um, unlike in other industry, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to uh, evaluate the, uh, the carbon footprint in the mice industry for the event. And uh, usually, we, uh, typically, we conduct a, a life cycle assessment for a mice event according to some international standard. But uh, the, for the carbon uh, footprint, uh, for the life cycle uh, uh, assessment, it's very difficult to, to the data collection. Because for, for one event, usually they have many uh, key stakeholders, such as an uh, organizer, the event agencies, and some audience, and some uh, venue providers. All these, uh, all these uh, stakeholders, they, they will contribute in, uh, some data source for some uh, carbon footprint. But uh, for the traditional way, usually we use in the paper or some Excel. So it's very uh, confused and some are clear from the data collection. But Alibaba, Alibaba Cloud, we, we use some digital solution or some tools we call the energy expert, which can uh, collect all the data automatically and uh, calculate the footprint according to some uh, well-established international standards, such as the TUV, SGS, uh, which is uh, uh, widely recognized by, by the world. So, uh, for example, we just, uh, uh, we just have the Olympic eSports Week 2023 uh, in Singapore to collect all the data uh, from the event. And all, we also have uh, participate in the iLight Festival Singapore to build up the footprint, uh, the, the carbon footprint uh, collection and uh, uh, to provide an uh, actionable insight and some, uh, some uh, energy saving recommendation by the tools. So this is a digital solution Alibaba Cloud and Alibaba Group are using. We are, we are building a, a digital ecosystem to have all the, our external uh, partner to use this technology. Yeah. So, so use of data, use of AI, and focusing to bring carbon solutions to your clients. Yes. Um, now, are there any other challenges that come up with that that you think you're able to help address right now for the industry based on your work? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, that, so those are really the, the pieces. Um, and we'll just keep on this topic um, because Kenneth, I know you're also into uh, carbon as well. Um, so can you tell us about what Razor's doing for the, the, the carbon, the calculation, and getting deeper into this, working with data and tech? Yeah, um, I think Definitely, uh, this is a very important point and, uh, for us because I think that in order to solve a problem, we must f first understand the problem. The best way is to measure it. And I think um, all these are actually, uh, all these calculations are often not made no known to a lot of public. Uh, we often need to hire uh, you know, a big team to actually analyze. But I, I just now I just want to echo what uh, Derek mentioned. I think there's a lot of solutions out there to actually help us accelerate our understanding of our carbon footprint. Uh, in Razor, we also believe in life cycle assessments. So we do uh, life cycle assessment in every product that we manufacture. And we also started to look into the corporate, uh, what's the carbon fo footprint of a corporate action. If you want to hold a buffet line or if you want to do a pop-up store in a, in a shopping mall, what is the carbon footprint? And by knowing the carbon footprint, we can then mitigate. And uh, for instance, if I recycle uh, a, p a piece of furniture within, uh, say, if it's a metal structure. If I recycle the metal right after that, I will achieve a 11% uh, reduction rather than I just throw it to a landfill. So uh, making all these small adjustments actually help to reduce our carbon footprint and uh, help us understand what is 
the right way to communicate to consumers because consumers want to know, you know, like on one hand, you are preaching that you are doing so much for the environment, but you must be able to put it in actual numbers and translate it to the consumers and let the consumers understand the life cycle journey of a product, of, a, of an event, and, and um, assure them that you are taking active steps to actually reduce the carbon footprint. And um, I know this is not a com uh, favorite topic, but wherever we can't remove, at the very last, uh, you know, the stubborn last 10% of carbon footprint, we will then use carbon offsets. Because carbon offsets still remains a very important uh, tool, instrument, because uh, if the carbon market were to grow, uh, that will incentivize more people to start carbon removal projects, and that would help to remove carbon in the atmosphere. So, uh, Razor, we are, uh, we are committed to SBTI, 1.5 degree uh, scenario. So, uh, so that's, this is part and parcel of our day-to-day -day work to actually manage carbon footprint for our products and for events with our consumers. Very good. So, we're starting to get the terminology. We've got LCA, we've got SBTI, we've got uh, you know, carbon neutral, that kind of thing. So let's, um, and offsetting, we'll go into some terms first, but Matthias, I wanted to get your perspective because we're seeing now Razor and Alibaba, um, very specific on your organizations, but you, you see the gamut. I mean, the possibilities are there, but we have, we have an event side by side here. There's digital signage everywhere. I saw there was a very, you know, we have, we have eco materials. There's bulk dispensers for water, um, but walking in, I saw Singtel's hoping, uh, holding a general manager meeting, not, or AGM, and I don't think I've ever seen as much signage for registration ever. In the amount of PVC, the amount of, of signage that then can't be recycled and is, is now present, it's now on people's minds. And so the, the point of the LCA and what you're talking about is people start to think about this, they start to consider and say, what's quality? Do I really need to use as much? Can I find ways to reduce or to use alternatives? Um, but we see there is a gamut of awareness and interest among organizers, as you said. So what do you do to kind of bridge the gap between the various spectrum of clients that you have, some who may be really into this, and some not at all? How do you, how do you bridge that? It's actually, quite, for us, it's a bit of, in our industry, there's, of course, a big leap to make. Um, we want to provide fantastic service. And fantastic service is, of course, getting your coffee and all of this, but it's also providing guidance to your delegates. So you see all these registration signs over with Singtel. There's a good intention behind it. We want to make sure everybody finds it properly, they find their way easily, and that's what we were trained to do for so many years, to provide the best possible service. And we have to start thinking a little bit, okay, how can we do this in new ways without having that huge environmental impact but still keeping the service element up? And that's where many of our clients and also some of our colleagues are really struggling with that, saying, okay, um, am I still printing all my program books and all my abstract books and whatever I have in the conference industry because people want it, or is this unnecessary waste that I could somehow avoid? Um, and that thinking is just slowly taking place. So the way we go about it is to actually make it more um, a motivational thing for our staff as well. The way we run our conferences is that we have different departments for different areas. So we have a, a department that does registration management, one that does speaker management, one that does uh, the general organization, marketing, and so on. And we put challenges out and say, how can each of these departments make sure that this conference runs as a zero waste project? So you get your staff involved directly into thinking about this and coming up with ideas how they can do their job without the waste, without that impact, but still providing the best possible service. And it's actually something that produces great ideas, it's something that's very motivating, and it's something that um, actually gets everybody on board with it. So this idea with all these signages that they have at the registration desk, we solve it now with human signage. So you put people out there in colorful t-shirts that guide people their way from the, wherever they start to the registration desk, and they have this additional benefit that they can say, good morning, how are you today? Did you have a good day? So they're actually a level up from the service that a sign provides, but they're much more environmentally friendly. 
And these are some simple ideas that all our staff come up with, and that's kind of how, how we go about this and how we solve this internally. So the, the, of, of, of getting various people involved to solutions. So yeah. um, now, Derek, would you agree that, that that's the role a MICE organizer plays in, in ESG is to be able to sort of help bring together and, and conduct? Is that, is that, what, what do you see the role of an ESG, uh, of a MICE organizer um, in the role of ESG? What, what do you see as the role of a MICE organizer uh, in ESG? What role do they play to help forward? OK, OK. So um, for Alibaba, uh, we, we have several goals. Uh, so first one, uh, first and second uh, is in a direct and direct that we can reduce in the carbon emission. Uh, every year, uh, Alibaba group, we are, uh, we are release uh, ESG report, uh, including how we, uh, how we decarbonize all the, uh, all the all the business, including the e-commerce, logistics, and some financial service. And we also have uh, uh, pushed our uh, upstream and downstream uh, supply chain uh, partners uh, for our e-commerce or some, uh, some logistic and retail uh, industry. So, so by this way, we, uh, we, we take our responsibility to, uh, de uh, to reduce the carbon emission for, uh, for a huge uh, target. And we, we, ha uh, we have uh, we are aiming to uh, build up on the carbon uh, neutrality at, uh, uh, in 20, uh, 2030. And uh, beside this, we also have a, a statement that we, we are uh, doing the, the scope free plus, uh, which means that uh, not only for us and, but, uh, and uh, our supply chain, but also for the ecosystem. We are build up on the digital ecosystem using our AI, uh, cloud, uh, cloud technology, and some, uh, some big data technology. So for example, uh, we, we launched our uh, ERG uh, digital solution. We call the ENG Expert. So ENG Expert can, uh, can integrate with the comprehensive systems so from different uh, data source. And we can, it can also collect the data uh, so automatically and uh, to monitor all the uh, footprint uh, life cycle to do the assessment. And we, uh, so for this uh, technology, we, we can give some uh, actionable insight and uh, give some uh, how to reduce the, the energy and uh, for the uh, recommendation. Uh, we already have some, uh, some events, such as an LEP uh, tech event in Saudi Arabia. We built up an Alibaba Cloud uh, exhibition booth in the event, which is uh, Carbon, uh, carbon neutral, certified by, by TUV, uh, the international organization. So by this way, uh, we are taking some, uh, some scope, so for our internal and external and some uh, ecosystem to push all the, uh, the green uh, technology to build up on the ESG. Yeah. So the, the, one of the key points I think I like about that is that in, in corporate world, it's about pushing things on the supply chain and working with supply chain on your products and your services. And that's really what an event is in the organizer. And can you push that down and work with each of their suppliers in time um, and on purpose to make sure, and in budget, hopefully, to make sure that it, it kind of works. And so, um, and, and you were able to certify carbon neutral the, the, in, in Saudi Arabia. It was, it was a third party who went in and verified it. Because I know that's one of the main things. We talk a big game, everybody, but the, the risk we always run is the greenwashing. Right, the, the greenwashing. So, um, actually, Derek, I mean, back to you. I mean, is there? How do we avoid this 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 risk of greenwashing or perception among attendees or exhibitors or clients or others that what we're doing is not genuine? Um, what what are your, your views on, on greenwashing? Okay, so uh, the greenwashing uh, is a very quite a common uh, phenomenon at this moment because although there are many uh, many uh, concept of the ESG, but I don't think. Uh, they have some solid uh, concept for, for the peoples. So usually uh, we, we found that the, the greenwash sometimes is um, uh, misleading uh, some, uh, some public uh, people and enterprise. Uh, for us, we, we think uh, we can avoid the greenwashing by some uh, by the transparency. So that means that we, we can put our, all our data collection and our, our uh, carbon, uh, carbon uh, re reduction for uh, from the evidence, which has which, uh, which certified and uh, verified by an uh, international organization, so this is uh, very important. And then the other things that uh, we think uh, we need to uh, draw on the public attention for the real ESG concept. Uh, so that means that uh, 
so we can we can use some uh, for example for Alibaba Cloud we launch our mini program so which uh, can uh, let every um, public people can use this mini program to uh, to know how to uh, how to do uh, change their lifestyle to uh, to decarbonize and how can they uh, to influence the other people around him and. Uh, so uh, in the uh, past the event of the uh, uh, Olympic eSports Week 2023 in Singapore, one month ago, uh, we have almost 5,000 people uh, pledged using this uh, mini program to, to, uh, to pledge that they will change their lifestyle to reduce the carbon emission uh, in the daylight. Yeah, such, so such a way. So, so first, I, 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 I three point. First, transparency in the data, saying, look, this is how we're doing it. This is what we're doing. These are the, these are the numbers. Here you go. Second, the certifying or the verifying credibly by an external party yes, that yes. says this is legit. Um, and then, and then comes the interesting one. So, building awareness of what to do and how to do. Um, and you, so, you built an app for attendees to, to know how they can be sustainable at the event. That's um, fa fantastic. So, uh, that kind of blending the engagement with here is how you can be sustainable. We've seen that. Um, event pledges or event activities that, that sort of go into that. Um, now, Kenneth, would you agree in terms of those, those key points, or how would you look at that to avoid the greenwashing um, that might come up in your organization? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think a uh, very important point is independent third party coming in to verify your claims. And I think more than often, greenwashing is not because uh, the business is, uh, has malicious intent to, to, to cheat the consumers, but more, more than often, it's it's actually because they do not have the awareness. Even uh, you know, business owners, uh, corporations, uh, you know, they, they find it very hard to communicate sustainability. So internally within Razor, we want to make sure that when we make claims, we don't make vague claims. So um, you know, uh, we don't say that this is an eco-friendly product or this is an eco-friendly event because eco-friendly by itself, it doesn't mean anything. So I think uh, it's always very important to precise the claims into tangible things that you can actually refer back to. So for instance, uh, we can say that 100% you know, uh, of the, the fabrication for this event is made of recycled material. So this is extremely precise. And, and for our products, uh, when we do claims, we will, we will actually get an uh, independent third party, just like what Derek mentioned, to verify that 46% you know, of this product or its recycled content. So I think this is actually very important. Um, the global trend for greenwashing, I think, uh, I think mainly started from the US and the EU side. In, in US, you can see that you know, consumers starting class level lawsuits against companies making false claim and, and, and stuff, right? So I think that is the start and it has since impacted the entire economy. Uh, this year, Korea is the first Asian company to start a fine for greenwashing. So we foresee that the trend will spread, and I think uh, for not just Korea, but you know, the entire Asia-Pacific region. So I think it's actually very important to precise on the term, engage an independent third party to certify your claims, and to really just, uh, you know, even if there's some shortcomings, it's imperfect, uh, you know, if you can tell people that 80% of, uh, of the fabrication in this event is uh, made of recycled material, I mean, you might not be 100%, but uh, at least you are, forefront, uh, you are upfront with your consumers, and that is the transparency that we need uh, in this era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think the, the independent verification is something that, that is, is somewhat common in our industry for, for mice. Um, STB, in the sustainability roadmap in general, um, destination, hotel, and, and mice, one of the things that STB has done is sign on the hotel side is saying we want hotels to be certified by GSTC, which the tenet of it is the, the auditor has to be separate from the entity that's helping do the, the coaching or the improvement. Um, and that gives it the credibility to help. And then they've also partnered to launch and develop a MICE criteria for GSTC. But we are seeing it. There is the regulation softly on that side. Then we have the EU, the Green Claims Directive. So yes, there is a serious backlash against these false claims or misleading claims, but it might not always be the intention to mislead. There might be some kind of confusion. So I mean, Matthias, let me ask you, are you guilty of greenwashing? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, and I think many of us are. But the question is, what is the intent behind it, right? Um, if, it a if it's a malicious intent where you try to really mislead people in what you're doing, that, of course, is not great. But I think, especially when it comes to environmentally friendly practices, this is, we're still evolving. 
we're still learning what is right and how far we can go and what we can do. And it really depends on how you look at things. And we had a bit of a discussion beforehand. If you look at sustainability purely from a carbon perspective, you might go in and you say, oh, maybe a plastic bottle is still better than a glass bottle that I bring in from far away that takes more energy to produce, that takes more energy to transport somewhere. Uh, but then the plastic bottle ends, in the, ends up in the ocean. It ends up being microplastic for us again. So it really depends, how do I look at things? Do I look at it purely carbon? Do I look at full sustainable impact? Do I look at impact on the ecosystem? Do I look at all of these other issues? And then I come to a completely different answer. So it is extremely confusing for us as we work with it, when we look at it and say, what is sustainable and what is not? It really depends on what you take into account when you look at sustainability. And that is so important when we look at how we look at it from a mice perspective, because we have more than one goal to fulfill. It's not just about carbon emissions for us. It's about a lot of other areas that we impact. And I mentioned that at the beginning when I opened the UN SDGs. For years, sustainability also meant that we level the playing field among different professionals around the globe, that they have equal access to education, they have equal access to networking to each other. If I look at that from a pure carbon perspective, I cannot fly people around the globe to meet in one place. But if I look at it, what is the impact that those people have on their communities again? Then it might make sense to say, yes, we come together in person in a place, we educate each other, we network with each other, and then I bring this knowledge and these new networks home, and I provide better patient care, I do better research, I have better partnerships. So in our world, it's not black and white. We really have to look at it from a holistic perspective. Yeah, uh, uh, some points that I would, I would recommend as well. It's a lot to learn, to absorb, to understand. And it is, it is about trying and trial and error. We've all made mistakes. I've been guilty of greenwashing without knowing it because we don't always know what's the right answer. And there's a myriad of factors even just in the environmental side of what's beneficial. And uh, yes, there was a certain entity that said we're going to do plastic bottles instead of glass um, that's nearby. But the, the other factors are what's key um, to, to, to make sure you're at least contemplating. And things will sort of solve. But um, typical to ESG, it's not just environmental. It's not just green, not just carbon. We've got the S and the G. And typical to sustainability reports and programs, now we're going to transition to the social. So. Um, uh, first, uh, and then we'll open it up for questions. So we'll, we'll talk about social. Derek, on your side, in terms of the, the, role, corp the role mice can play, any challenges, any, any false claims, um, how do you see, other, I mean, we got the um, example of the app and how you engage people. Any other ways that you, can, you, you see the social side or the people engagement in your organization? Yes, of course. Um, I think the, the social awareness is the most important from the, from the ESG. Because uh, ESG is not just the, for the, some enterprise or government agencies, it's about uh, all the people together. And so for Alibaba Group, so in, in China we have some Alipay. I don't know whether you ever use for Alipay. There are some mini program for the end forest. So every every your your payment behavior or some other uh, income behavior, we are converted to the carbon uh, reduction. So you can collect all the carbon uh, reduction uh, for some. Uh, the carbon equivalent grams. And uh, in Singapore, we, we, uh, we have an uh, Olympic eSports week uh, to launch a mini program. So everyone, uh, they can know uh, how can they use some uh, update their some lifestyle uh, behaviors and to uh, reduce the carbon emission. And besides this, uh, they can also do some uh, small game and they, they can know uh, how can they into the game, uh, they, they can know how can, uh, even for the, for the kids and some old adults, they, they, can, they can know how can they uh, reduce the carbon emission in, in the day life. The other thing that uh, they can also, uh, in the mini program, which is a social application uh, mobile app, uh, they can also uh, do some pledge, so, such as uh, what can we do uh, to contribute uh, to the society uh, for the ESG. So, because uh, everyone needed to take an action can contribute together. So this is uh, what we have done uh, in China and in Singapore. Yeah. Yep. 
So the gamification is, is key. Now, when we talk gamification, I have to look at you, Kenneth. Any, <laughs> any gamification or, or how do you view the social side and what do you do as your, because uh, you oversee the social as well for, for Razor, I believe. Yeah. I think uh, I totally echo uh, both, both uh, your points. I think uh, social is actually very important. For Razor, our key uh, strategy towards ESG is definitely having environment driving everything, but we can't do every, uh, you know, environmental sustainability without engaging the social side of things. So um, for the gaming sector, there is a very uh, important program called Playing for the Planet. This is an initiative under uh, United Nations uh, Environmental Program. So because uh, UN felt that uh, around 3.2 billion population on, in, on the planet are gamers. And if climate action were to happen, the next frontier is actually gamers. So actually our, our, bot, our, our baseline is actually very low. If you are Candy Crush player, you do, <laughs> you do Candy Crush, you are a gamer already, okay? You do games on mobile, you are a gamer. So it's important to engage you. And, and what UNEP uh, actually focuses on a lot on is actually having gamification to educate the consumers. Because nowadays, consumers don't like to be talked down to. They don't like us to be all preachy and tell them, you know, you should do this, you should not do that. And more than often, sustainability is about, you know, uh, the, the way we communicate is about taking things away from people. You can't enjoy more, but the notion of gamification actually empowers them. We are giving you more. There's more things you can do, there's more fun you can have. But at the same time, we drop in subliminal, subliminal messaging such as, you know, you know in, the, in the game you will see diversity and inclusion, you will see climate action, you will talk about uh, you know, people who are less advantaged in, in you, but all together come, to, come together in the team to, to win the competition. So there's a lot of elements that we can do to actually help to foster that kind of uh, social interaction and to then ultimately advance the goal of climate action. So, Totally for, for social uh, driving sustainability. Great. I'll do a last question to Matthias on this because now what we're really talking about gamification, we talk about mice, is the experience. Um, I'll give a couple of examples that I always go to. Apologies to those who've heard me speak before, but um, we were doing a, a sustainable event program for a conference, and the general contractor, we're doing the move in setup, and all the, all the staff, the contractor gave them a pin, metal plastic pin that said, keep it green. And, and we're, whoa, 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 more, more production, more waste, this is what we're going to do with it. But then it gave it to every single person working, and it built this community of, hey, recycle, keep it green, hey, put that in the right bin, hey, don't use too much tape. And so it, it, it helped sort of actually give the, uh, it was kind of gamifying, but building the social, not focusing on the environment. The other one that I always go to in hospitality, um, the soap, there's programs where you take the leftover soap, you boil it down, make new soap, and donate it. Now, that's an increased cost to the hotels, but um, hotel companies started to like it because the housekeepers came from the places the soap was going and being donated to. So you actually gave some purpose to the housekeepers and made them do their job better to actually help them lower the footprint. So it's, it's the intertwining of this, and in events, we see the experience, right? It's about, we think about the design. Right now, we're thinking about the design. We're gonna have a big stage that, you know, looks like we're in like a, a squid game here, like <laughs> someone's in the backstage, like pulling some strings. After the conference, someone's going to give a Zumba class here, but, but it's like we conceptualize so much experience. So, Matthias, how do you work to conceptualize experience and people into the sustainability topics? Um, great question. So, I think the number one thing about this is not to be an eco-warrior all the time. Mm -hmm. I think this whole idea of the, the, the example you just mentioned with the pins, that is exactly one way can become extremely demotivating. Yeah. If yep. somebody has an idea of putting out the pins and somebody comes, you just produced waste, then I'm demotivated doing anything again because I'm afraid anything I'll do will probably end up being the opposite of, I wanted, of what I wanted to achieve with, yep. uh, with that. So I think it's really important that we look at the intent that's behind it and what is the bigger picture behind it. And I feel bringing the team on board with it is key to everything. What you want to make sure is everybody in your supply chain is on board with your environmental goals, with the goals you set out for the conference. So setting out a big goal of saying, for example, we want to be a zero waste conference, or we want to be a as little waste as possible conference, really can unite everybody behind that goal. You can give it out to your suppliers, you can hand it out to your client, you can do whatever you want with that. What really it does is we are one community that goes after a single goal, 
we all have an impact on it. It's not just something that the CEO sets out. It's not just our green advisor that does it. Each one of us has their own impact on it. And it's more than just gamification. It's also how do I measure it in the end? Do I have my parameters? And can I present it? And can I be part of the overall goal that we achieve with that? So for us, we do that internally all the time. We've done it with conferences we've done in the past. It's extremely motivating. People talk about it afterwards still. And it became something where even some of our conference presidents that were at the beginning not very in, involved in it, that weren't big fans of our environmental ideas that we had or kind of initiatives that we did, they went up on stage and during the final closing ceremony said, we saved so many trees this time by not doing this. We've walked so many steps by our step challenge that we did. All of those parameters that they were so skeptical at the beginning, they, they went, came on board with it because they saw everybody else was excited about it and everybody else felt, about it, uh, felt great about it. So it's really bringing everybody on board, then you, you can achieve great things. Great. And, and a key point there, when we talk about net zero, zero waste, it's about the goal and everybody working toward it, not necessarily the, 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 the tidbit right now, I have to mobilize. Yes. Okay, um, so I think we have time for one or two questions. If anybody has a question, as sustainability questions tend to go, I know there might be some comments. Could you please, if there's a question, keep the question longer than the comment? Anybody who would like to ask a question? Anybody on the MSCOM for the STB Committee on Measurement on, on Technology? Anyone else? Danielle, anyone? You always have questions. <laughs> All right. OK, if no questions, we'll do uh, one last round going this way. Um, Outlook, what's next on what you're looking at to do for sustainability for mice? Anything that you're working on right now around the room? Uh, I, think, uh, I think what we can establish is that everybody is really on board. You see on the news, everybody is trying to get on the green bandwagon. And I think uh, the next part is about how do we actually use the existing technology to you know, creatively de de devise new solutions to actually help to decarbonize the industry. I believe the, we have done enough R&D. There's enough tech to go around. But more importantly, we must make the, the, the new technology, what came out of R&D, uh, viable for business. So I think there will be a lot more solutions for that. And I think from the regulator side, I think there will also be more, uh, more rules coming out to actually empower us. So for, for instance, like um, uh, in, in, in Europe, there's already green hydrogen power, uh, fuel cells powering uh, concerts of 5,000, 10,000 people. And I think, uh, I think the Singapore government is also looking strongly into green hydrogen. So there will be more rules to be set up to help us manage hydrogen. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, coming, you know, uh, coming from the uh, industry, I think we'll be able to deploy new uh, energy sources to actually help power our events. So I think from the regulatory side, the technology side, and from the business side, uh, we can expect a lot more things in the coming years. A lot more solutions, green hydrogen events. So, okay, uh, let me go one minute each, and then, and then we'll see if we take time for questions. So Matthias, one minute of what's next. Very quickly, I think for us, the biggest thing right now is move, uh, find the right balance between technology and life events to really understand where, how can we have the maximum impact it's not black it's, or white, it's not just one or the other. We really need to integrate that still properly. We thought we would do better after COVID. I think we've gone back into our comfort zone, which is 2019. Uh, and I think we still have to really take our learnings and see how we can integrate those two best. Very good. Derek, I mean, you're doing a lot already. Uh, what's next for you? Yes, yes. OK. Uh, Alibaba Cloud has already launched some uh, sustainability solution, a digital solution we call the Energy Expert. And we already uh, applied this technology with some, uh, some enterprise, such as the uh, Olympic eSports game, and uh, I like the Singapore uh, Festival of Singapore and some other uh, countries, uh, mice industries. And for the next step, so we are willing to build up on a digital ecosystem to collaborate with the government agencies, uh, some, such like the uh, National Environment Agency or some uh, organization, third party agencies and uh, some others. So to so build up a comprehensive ecosystem together to facilitate and uh, contribute to, uh, to the SMART plan uh, 2030 uh, in Singapore. 
to yeah. contribute everywhere. That's a good point. Regulation we know is next, but the opportunity to work with government to really help make sure it's, it's correct and done right and for a good purpose. And Singapore is a great example of that. So thank you. Can I, would you like, could you pose a question that, that we then discuss in the, in, the, in the lunch afterward, please? Yes, ask the question, yes. Mike? I just had to rise to the challenge, you know, you know, sustainability <laughs> committee and all that, which you go on together. Uh, thanks again to the committee, uh, to the panel. Um, so with all the discussion about decarbonization, now as a mice industry, we are an aggregator industry that works with the best providers of venue, even destination, F&B, you name it. So with regards to the last mile, what is the corporate's perspective on decarbonization partners? In other words, um, carbon offsets. Any perspectives? Thank you. Thank you. So because we're out of time, I'm going to ask that we all answer that question after the wrap-up over there and talk about carbon offsetting and leave that for the, the side discussion. So um, this is a great discussion. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you for the attendance. Thank you for the, the interest. Thank you to the great panelists for your perspectives uh, and really being open and discussing the challenges and opportunities of, of sustainability in mice. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.